Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our WebDriver IO series, today we are going to see how we can run the WebDriver IO test cases into the browser stack. So, so far we have seen how to run in our local, right? Like you can open the command prompt and you can run the command as npm run wdio and it takes all the test cases from your wdio.conf and then it executes them. And also we have seen how you can run the test cases by using the GitHub actions. So you can take the GitHub action, trigger that, and then it executes your test cases into the GitHub server actually by using their own images. But now we are going to see there is a third type of running the test cases that is in any cloud services. So pretty much it is similar but then it is a paid service. So browser stack is one of the cloud solution provider or cloud service provider, which allows you to run your test cases into the web browsers and also into your mobile applications. So if you see, if you go to the browserstack.com for the first time, you can just go and sign up yourself and you will be getting a hundred minutes of a free service where you can run your test cases into their service. Okay. Just to give it a try. There are a lot of different uh, ways or the product categories are there, or I would say that the licensing at this moment, because we are talking about the web automation. So the automate is the one that you will be looking for. Okay. The same way, if you are, if you want to automate your Appium projects or Appium test cases, you want to run, you can go with the Appium automate. At this moment, we'll just go with a simple test case running a simple configuration where it would take our test cases from my local, and then it will run into the browser stack. Now the benefit that I have got into this one is that you don't want to really keep all of your browser versions. Like let's say that if your manager or your lead says that we have to execute the 50 sets of test cases into Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and all these things, you might not have all those configurations ready-made, right? Because if you are using windows operating system, you might not able to execute your test cases into, into the Safari browser. You need to have Mac a system into that and which is very difficult and also maintaining different versions it is again a nightmare so that is why the like browser stack there are all other service providers are also there like you can use the sauce labs as well but at this moment let's look into the browser stack and i will be showcasing you a step-by-step -step guide how you can run your test cases into the browser stack. Okay. Now, if you go to the browser stack service documentation from the web driver IO, they are suggesting to have this particular library or the package to install. Let's now copy this one and then install it into our project directory. Now let me open. This is my project directory. I'll open into the command prompt and I will copy paste this one and enter. What it do? It will take a dev dependency to my into my package.json. Here it will be appending that. So let's wait until this finishes. Yeah, you can see that the latest version of the browser stack service got installed. Now let's see what are the other steps that we need to do that. So the second thing is that we need to have these services allocated with browser stack. Okay. Now let me just copy paste this one. And let's go to our wdioconf.ts. Okay. And here, if you come down to the services section, I think we have Selenium standalone, right? So what I will do, I'll comment this one for now. And I will write a services colon and you just to give like this and inside this you just copy paste this one see before we used to have like a chrome firefox all these things right after that we learned how to use the selenium standalone so that it it is applicable for all different browsers as well now we are looking into how you can use this service for the browser stack. Now, if you would have seen our Appium series, we have used Appium instead of a browser stack. So depending on the, your requirement, you will be keep changing this one. Okay. Now we are done with our second step. Now here you can see that there are two things that you need, the user and the key. Now from where we will be getting this user and key. Now that is something which will be provided by the browser stack. As I told, for the first time, when you open the browserstack.com, you need to log, you need to sign up 
and then log in with your account once you do that you see that depending on what licenses you have purchased at this moment everything is coming as free for us for a trial now if you see i will go to my automate section now this is where actually it allows me to go and run my test cases into the browsers desktop browsers okay now if you come down here you will see this screen actually now see by default node.js and webdriver io that's what i have selected already but you can change here if you click on this change you see that the browser stack supports these many different combinations so it is not just the webdriver io but if you are using Java with any of the combinations, these are all unit testing frameworks. The same thing if you are using a Node.js program, but if you are using any one of these, what do you call the libraries? Like for an instance, I'm going for Node.js with WebDriver IO. So I will just click on this and it gives me a step-by-step -step instructions how to use this particular, what do you call, details into our configuration file. Okay, now at this moment and it allows us to run it in parallel also. You can see that it is even allowing to have the parallel thread. Okay, but at this moment I'll go with the single thread only and you can get your, your username and password or the access key from here don't copy this one i will be changing this in future okay because this will be different than based on the login that you are using that if i go down here you have to choose the combinations let's say that i want to have only one parallel thread now you can see that you have to use the user and key as a pair and then you have to give the host name after that you need to specify the capabilities let's copy this one actually first okay so I'll go to the capabilities section. Okay, now if I go here into this capabilities, see at this moment I have the local execution, right? This Chrome means it is executing in my local. Now what I'm going to do at this moment, I will be commenting this one completely and I will take my own. Okay, now here I'll just copy this one. Oops, sorry, not this one. This should stay into the top. And I can keep somewhere here actually below to this. Let's say here I'm keeping it. Okay. You see that below to the config section, you need to assign that. And then after that, I need to specify the capabilities. Now let me copy this entire thing and let's go to here and let's go to the capabilities section. And here we have commented this one right now under this, I will be specifying this one actually and you can just give one here okay now see in this capabilities i can have one or multiple capabilities right so at this moment i want to run with chrome and the browser version is 103 and then some options i'm giving the b stack options if you would have seen in our apm we use app colon something right the same thing this is the browser stack options you can see for google chrome we are using Gook colon chrome option the same thing b stack dot options or colon and you have to specify from which operating system you want this chrome browser because you might need to have this chrome browser in your mac operating system so you can even choose that you can see now if i choose a combination let's say that i want to go for let's say osx it is it means that it's a it's a mac operating system let's say that Monterey. it is one of the latest operating system like if you have windows xp vista then windows 11 the same thing these are the different versions and here i want to use let's say that into the 107 and you see your and if you see here these got changed your capabilities got changed I don't have windows right at this moment. So I might say that, okay, because I don't have the windows, I will use the browser stack service to run these test cases into Chrome browser, but that should reside inside a windows operating system. That is what the browser stack will be giving you options. That's it. Now the capabilities are set. I don't think so anything else really that is mandatory at this moment. Don't worry about this common capabilities. We'll see later. Max instances at this moment it is not required because I'm running in single thread only. You can see I have only one capability. 
okay so how many test cases i have it will always run in sequential only now the cap i think everything is, everything is set now now what i will do i'll run the test case now how do you run the test cases if you go to the documentation simple thing you just need to run as usual only and these things are different things that it is giving don't worry about that we'll discuss when we are running our appium test cases into the browser stack and now let's open my command prompt here and let's clear it okay now how do i run npm run wdio okay no other setup is required because we are not changing anything to my script section right so i don't need to worry about that okay so let me run and see what happens it shouldn't be running on my local now it should run into the browser stack and you can see that here also it is giving running one of five okay and if you go down here you will see view test result because it is just waiting it's not yet completed actually so don't worry about that and you can see that there are a lot of different things it is getting and that's what i really liked about this you don't really need to maintain any of the uh, what you call reporting structure or like where you are running and then any past history about your run everything it is coming here you can see all the parameters that you are running with your test case and also it is recorded also so if you just run it it should show how to launch your chrome browser and you can see that it is launching the chrome browser and it should run the test case as well see at this moment it is not running any test cases because if you go to this example here you will see that we were just running a simple it block only we were not running any kind of launching the url and doing all these things that's why it didn't run but if you would have run with browser launching and everything you will see here and always try to have this into a uh, what do you call maximize window mode so that you can see a bigger picture of that okay and you can see all the parameters that you have run with your text logs everything network logs anything that you will be getting everything you will be seeing here and it is just giving an error that the build name is not specified so if you see at the beginning it given an option here you have to specify a build number some kind of build name you need to give so that later when you want to see that you can just search with this build name and you will get the results into the browser stack that is the beauty of that okay so every time you can just see those things here fine and also like as i told you can have multiple capabilities with a max instance here set up and as per that it will be running okay so that's pretty much it actually here a simple configuration now what did we do here so we did couple of things let's start from the beginning the first thing is that into the package.json we have installed this browser stack service after that we went into our wdio.conf.ts here we have specified our user and key that specifies that where exactly we want to run our test cases now your project doesn't know right where exactly it should run okay which account it should run so this user and key determines where exactly you are running your test cases which account and based on that it will redirect your test cases there now towards bottom we have specified couple of capabilities depending on the browser stack and then this service okay that's pretty much it now you might say a question that okay now you have specified into the wdio.conf.ts to run all the test cases into the browser stack do i need to always do a comment and uncomment when i'm like let's say you have written two test cases you are doing some debug now for debugging also you might not need to execute into the browser stack right because it consumes the i mean it it bears the cost actually every time you run something like if you have a unlimited timing into the browser stack it's good but if you are taking any kind of timely basis like for an instance i have only 100 minutes of free plan like i have already consumed one minute if any kind of debug i will be keep on doing i might lose my time here the same thing your company or the organization might lose the cost 
that is why we have to make sure that our framework should be capable of running the test cases into the into the local or debugging the test cases into the local once you gain the confidence then the actual test cases will be running into your browser stack okay now you can't really every time do comment and uncomment right to fit with your local environment and with your what do you call with your browser stack so this is some concept which we again already discussed in our Appium series that we will be splitting this configuration file into a shared configuration and specific to the local and specific to the browser stack. Okay, so stay tuned and we will be seeing some more interesting topics about how to deal with the browser stack. So that's pretty much it for today. Hope this session gives some interesting idea and to do something new. So stay tuned and do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.